Okay, thank you very much for coming for the for our session. I hope we will get <coughs> critical comments for our work. Just want would like to mention that this is the uh, preliminary work we just started two weeks ago, and we decided that uh, it's better to to get some comments for for the content we have up to now. So the results are in a trial in trial version. Uh, as, we, as you notice from the title of the presentation, we, we would like to see the impact of natural disasters and the financial crisis to the global agriculture. And the problem with the, when we talk about the global agriculture is that we don't have um, enough, enough data. So in, in such situation, how, what kind of uh, approach we have to take in terms of uh, in, when, when, we, when we conduct empirical results? And well, for the introduction, I can say that there would be more extreme events such as droughts, floods, and hurricanes because of the because of the climate change, and so we don't know the magnitude of the magnitude of it and the location of of these uh, disasters, and who are the vulnerable countries? These are mostly the developing countries, but we shouldn't forget about the also the developed countries. Floods, for example, when floods uh, happen, we we saw. In the news, also that the developed countries also suffer from the natural disasters in a great extent. And for the for why we think that the developing countries uh, have uh, get the major impact because they already have enough problems, and this is the climate change acts as a risk multiplier to the existing problems. Yeah, these are the basic examples. I will just jump to to save some time. And here I would like to show the uh, show show that the, over the over the several years, decades, uh, we see that the average temperature, global mean temperature, is rising. So this is a sign which uh, which says that our climate is changing. And we have to we have to see how this impact the the sectors. Um, our interest <coughs> is our interest is in the ag agricultural sector. Yeah, these are also few introductions, which I think I can skip. Yeah, we can <coughs> see that uh, intergovernmental panel on climate change. They they mentioned that the climate of Earth uh, would be. Two to six uh, Celsius warmer than in the pre-industrial era by the end of the 21st century, uh, due to increases in the greenhouse gases. So the we we can expect that the warm warmest period on Earth for at least the last uh, 1,000 years and and probably the probably the last 100,000 years. And. The large scale uh, warming is expected to be accompanied by increased frequency and intensity of, of these uh, extreme events such as uh, heavy rainfall, uh, floods, and droughts. And as I mentioned, it's not only the developing countries, but also the developed countries suffer from, from these natural disasters. And even so, that there have been several technology developments to increase the crop yields. Yeah, in the in in developing countries, uh, the crop crop yields uh, or crop production would still, would highly still uh, remains highly dependent on uh, highly dependent on cli climate uh, because of solar radiation, temperature, and pre precipitation. Moreover, we have to take into account the financial crisis which have occurred and expected to occur in the coming years. This is the extra extra shock to to the sector, and uh, the speed which global economic conditions have altered has been very unclear and left uh, many many people um, in agriculture uncertain about the future future prospects. We uh, from the from statistics we can we can notice that high agricultural commodity prices fell down during the second half of the 2008 and in many markets still have struggled to recover. And agricultural commodity prices would be sadly impacted by, by crash in Wall stock market. Markets was a big surprise. But the, the economists already showed that, that there's a linkage between the oil prices and the grain, grain prices. When one increase, another one 
uh, tends to also increase, and when one increases, another one also tends to decrease. Um, what's important here is the financial crisis spread rapidly around the globe because of the globalization. Even the close countries also suffered from it to some extent. And so it became, this is a short-run macroeconomic adjustment became the long-term development problem. But we have, to, we have to try to see that how, what happened in the past so that we could, we could expect what is going to happen in the future. For that, there, are, there have been developed several uh, models. Uh, we have seen the one of them yesterday in the plenary session. But the problem with this kind of models is that you dictate the model how to behave. So you become a kind of a, a driver and you, and you expect what you are going to get. And when, when we use the historical da data to see the, to see the impact of several indicators, so in our case, we use the climate change indicators and uh, uh, financial crisis indicators, uh, we can we can we, we, we will be able to see that what was the effect to the agricultural sector, more specifically to the agricultural production, the agricultural production, and moreover we also try to to explain the technical efficiency by these variables. Uh, we uh, for the analysis we have used the stochastic frontier analysis, so this basically. Uh, the difference between the stochastic frontier from the traditional production function is it takes in it, the error term has two parts. So we can, uh, I, uh, for simplicity, I made the three three forms of it. We can see that OL, OLS deterministic and CFA uh, formulations. In the OLS, we see that we have uh, we have only the error term, and this doesn't take into account the technical efficiency. In the deterministic uh, specification, we have the only technical efficiency and we don't take into account the measurement errors. As, but so how, what's good about stochastic frontier analysis is it takes into account the measurement error and also the technical efficiency. And for, for simplicity, we use the Cobb-Douglas pro production function. So we have, uh, in, in, the, in the model specification, we have the deterministic component, we have also the noise, and we have the inefficiency term. We use the maximum likelihood estimation to calculate technical, uh, our model and the technical efficiencies. So we, have, we will have panel, panel, we have panel data for our analysis um, of, over the several years. Yeah, so these are some specifications. And we also have the inefficiency effects model. When we derive the stochastic frontier analysis from uh, technical efficiencies from the model, we use them in one stage, we use them in the inefficiency effects mo model to see the some, some uh, variables such as cli climate variables and financial crisis variables and to see the impact on the technical efficiency. For the analysis, we have, um, we have 135 countries, and our dependent variables is the net agricultural production value, because uh, we, we, we have included the financial crisis variables, it's very difficult to see if we take, the, we take into account the every year. That's why we have the five-year average, so that we could, we could see the volatility of, of, this, of these variables. Uh, so we have basic regressors, production inputs. Uh, we got it from the FAO data, which has a lot of problems. I think you, if you work on this agricultural sector, you know what I'm talking. Uh, so we struggled a, lo a lot. And for, for inputs, we have labor, arable land, fertilizer, machinery. And for the climate change variables, we have used the database from the international disaster a database, the years which include one, uh, 1980 and 2010. Our climate variables um, drought, estimated drought, estimated damage caused from the drought, and estimated damage caused from the flooding. And we have also included the financial crisis variables, which we got from the World Development Report. So these, these are the GDP per capita growth 
uh, as an output volatility, and we also included the uh, inflation volatility over the over the given years as a five-year average. So our empirical results uh, for the moment looks like this. So for, for in the full sample, we have all the countries, 135 countries, and we can see for for the moment we can see that there are. Uh, our financial crisis variables are significant, and they are negatively, and they have a negative impact to the agricultural production. And surprisingly, we have the flood. Our climate variable has a pos positive impact. That's a, that's a, for the moment that's a surprising result. Uh, so we we we're, we're trying to find out if it's if there's any measurement if there's any measurement error or there is the explanation, there's a story behind it. Mm -hmm. And we divided uh, our full sample to high income countries, uh, developing countries, and also developing uh, low income countries, middle income countries by the World Bank specification. Developing countries also in include the low income countries and middle income countries. So we see that from the analysis, we have this financial crisis variables. They are uh, those who, which are significant, are have a negative impact. I think it's the model is also working in the subsamples. We are so far we are kind of satisfied with that. But for the for the variable which was significant in the full sample, uh, that uh, flood damage is not significant in high income countries, but and significant positive significant developing countries, and has a negative impact in the low income countries. So we see that in the developing country, uh, in the high income countries and, and also in the, in, the, in the middle income countries, we notice that the flood damage has a positive impact, but uh, it has a negative impact in the low income countries. So this, for, for now we can, we, can, we can say that the financial and climate change variables have a both have a negative impact in the in the case of in the case of low low income countries, and and we have here we have also report the technical efficiencies. As you have noticed, I I, I have assumed that technical efficiency is not changing over the years. When we try to include the year variable in the model, the, we have the convergence problem, so we have to work on it. Why this is happening? But so far, for technical efficiency over the years, for the full sample is 0.62.5%. Uh, uh, so this means that the, there is a substantial technical inefficiency in agricultural production uh, for, for the whole sample. But when we, when we consider the technical efficiency for the high income countries, we notice that they have done a very good job and they are almost um, equal to the ideal case, which is the 97%. To be ideal, it has to be one. So 97% of the countries have done a very well job. And, but for, for the developing countries, we see that the technical efficiency is 64%. And for the middle income countries, uh, 76%. We notice that low income countries actually have a higher technical efficiency than the middle income countries. So this is something we could think about What's uh, what's the real situation behind behind these numbers? And I think for for now, uh, what we could say that low-income countries are actually very very careful in using the uh, get trying to get the maximum output from the uh, from the given output levels. We have also uh, run the first uh, first stage analysis, but included the um, this. Financial and financial and climate change variables uh, in the in the second stage, but we run the for one stage analysis, which which basically says that we have used the technical efficiency as a dependent variable, and included uh, this uh, climate change and financial uh, in financial crisis variables as an uh, explanatory factors, which explain and we tried to see the. The, if they are significantly related to the technical efficiency, Technic here technical inefficiency, the positive results means that it has a negative impact on uh, on technical efficiency, 
when it's negative, it has a positive impact on technical efficiency. Uh, as, as you saw in the previous slides, the, we used the uh, term uh, technical efficiency was, was negative. That's why in our dependent variable has a negative technical efficiency. Uh, we have the sample for high-income countries uh, and for the low-income countries. We find, that, we find that all our variables are negatively related with the technical efficiency. When we try to, so this basically means that when we, when there is uh, less, less input or financial crisis volatility, then technical efficiency improve, uh, improves. And when there is uh, less climate change, so our technical efficiency improves. These are the results for the moment. And I hope you will give me the, some good, good and critical comments so that we could take that into account. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.